Reports are out that the Warriors and three other teams are working out a very good defender that was a former first-round pick, but that's not what this show leads with. Today, the, the juicy news. Not really news. Not even really a report. But the name Giannis <laughs> was mentioned. And when the name Giannis is mentioned and tied to the Warriors in any way possible, we discuss it. Could it ever happen in the future? We have Matt Kolsky on. We're breaking it down. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is the good word, everyone? Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen of every day. A couple ways you can catch us. We're free and available wherever you get your audio podcasts. You can listen to us that way. And if you want to see our smiling faces, we're on YouTube. You can go ahead and give us the thumbs up. It's three, free there as well. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the show and hit that bell so you know when we are live come season. Today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. My name is Charlie Walter, formerly of 95.7 The Game in San Francisco, also CBS News Bay Area. Cover the Warriors title run in 21-22. Joining me today, a former co-host of mine, it's Matt Kolsky. Now of KMBR, you can listen to his takes on the Warriors on that radio station in San Francisco and the whole Bay Area as a whole. Today's show, we're talking about a little star hunting. Sam Mamick was recently on the TK show with Tim Kawakami, and the names Jimmy Butler and Giannis got brought up. What's the validity behind these names being brought up? We have Matt on to help us discuss it. Also, Nas Little is working out with the Golden State Warriors. Kevon Looney entering a contract season. The last time he did so, he was excellent in the NBA championship season. And now we hear that he is shooting some threes. So, Kolsky, let's start with a little star hunting. That's where the Tim Kawakami show brought us some gold. This is content gold. Whenever you hear Sam Amick come on the show and say that, you know, they're clearly interested in the big fish going after Paul George, Lowry, and now we hear LeBron James last season. <laughs> and then during his appearance, Amick says, it's commonly known that Golden State sees Antetokounmpo as their unicorn, essentially, their dream target. In quotes, one thing I think is just always going to be monitored around the NBA is if the wheels fall off the bucks, Amick said. We know that Joe Lacob has had dreams of Giannis coming the Warriors' way for a very long time. Again, unlikely. But Chris Middleton is going to be a free agent next summer. I think Giannis is worth monitoring. Now, the only reason I will entertain it on this show is because the Warriors do have as good of trade assets as just about anyone. You remember that deal that Utah wanted for Lowry Markinen? I think that same deal could potentially get Giannis, but a lot has to happen in order for us to even entertain this conversation. And then Jimmy Butler is brought up as well. Uh, we can get into that too. But Kolsky, good to see you. That was the longest intro of all time. You take it away from here with your thoughts on this report. Well, as you say, report is a strong word for what Sam Amick was doing there. I love Sam, and and I think he's connecting dots that are real. He's, he's doing some real dot connecting, but he is dot connecting, um, and, and I think he said as much. You know, he's not representing that as a Giannis deal is imminent by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, let's take them one by one. And Jimmy, we talked about a little bit, right? I mean, I think the fit is obvious if if – however you get him involves unloading Andrew Wiggins. Anyway, the fit is obvious. He could play the two or the three for you, probably even small ball four in certain lineups next to Draymond. Um, whether they think they can revitalize Wiggins or think they can get the best out of Kaminga. Miami is the sort of place that talks themselves into talent because they believe once they get guys in to Miami, they can whip them into shape. And I think both Wiggins and Kaminga are candidates for that in different ways. Uh, I, Jimmy Butler, there was noise this summer. We've got a well-established history of Jimmy Butler noise turning into a Jimmy Butler trade within a year. So I think there's a better than 50% chance that he's going to be traded before this time a year from now. Whether the Warriors have the best offer, whether... 
Butler is able to dictate his own destination somewhat and, and, you know, how he values the Warriors. Those are all huge question marks. But I do see that as a realistic trade target as far as the big names go. Probably the most realistic trade target of the big names, especially if we're thinking about soon. I I can't envision to move to Giannis. I cannot, can't envision any scenario where things hit the fan bad enough in Milwaukee for Giannis to ask out by January, right? That's That would be somebody would probably have to like suffer a tragic accident for, for it to get that bad that fast. So the Giannis thing to the extent that it exists is, is definitely a longer term idea. That being said, we heard rumblings about Giannis's level of satisfaction right before the Dame Lillard trade happened. And I don't think it takes too much of a leap in logic to suggest that the Dame Lillard trade has yet to pay great dividends for the Bucks. We should be clear that the only way Giannis becomes available is if he insists on leaving Milwaukee. But if he does do that, they will obviously be inclined to trade him rather than lose arguably the greatest asset in the last 20 years for nothing. And if that happens, as you say, the Warriors are at least in the conversation, provided they haven't made another deal, when it comes to who can put together the most insane package, because it will take an insane package. Even if Giannis says, I want out and I only want to go to the Warriors, they're still going to have to pony up because there's a level at which if you're the Bucks, like you're not just going to give him up for anything less than a massive haul. Let's just say Giannis will draw more than Rudy Gobert in a trade. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would think so. so and, and Rudy drew plenty. Yeah. So, so that is a pipe dream. And, and then how do you make the math work? You know, how do you get the numbers to work? If Andrew Wiggins, isn't involved in that trade or is still on the team if it if it was in the near future and not the the further away well like, that's the yeah. trick it's hard to figure out how you make it work especially because like i steph curry is honestly the best thing to ever happen to my entire life so i have nothing but love and respect for steph curry i have almost that much respect for Giannis as a basketball player and, and someone committed to winning. I don't think Steph and Giannis with nothing else gets you super far in 2026. Do you, I, I'm just trying to be realistic. So it, they it, have Draymond, it, they'd have Steph, they'd have Giannis. They've had Draymond. They'd probably have to get rid of the untradeable brand of Bajemski. They'd have to get rid of Kaminga. They'd, they'd have, have to get rid of, of everything Moody. else. They'd have to get rid of just about everything. They'd probably keep Trace Jackson Davis. They'd have, but I mean, we're Quentin just, Post. we're spitballing now, right? Because it, even if they keep Draymond in that's in this scenario, which I don't know if they could financially to make it all work, but let's say you're building now around, 36 year old Steph, 35 year old Draymond and like 33 year old Giannis in 2025, 26. I'm not saying that doesn't sound intriguing. Okay. It obviously sounds interesting. And if, if there's any way to put Giannis next to Steph, I think you probably do it, whatever it takes, but it's such a remote possibility to even be available. And it would, it's, it's not exactly the sure thing it would have been a couple years ago. So I, I guess the reason I'm saying all this is to bring up this point. If I have an actual chance to trade for Jimmy Butler, just using Butler as an example, but even if it was someone not quite on that level, look, this is probably not a great example, but let's use Julius Randle as an example, right? Let's say for whatever reason, New York's fed up, things aren't working. Wiggins is you know, rotting at the end of the bench. It's a, my problem for your problem, Wiggins for Randall, right? Am I going to not make that deal, which probably makes me better today, even if it's marginally, because there's a 7% chance that I can trade for Giannis in six months? I just don't know. So 7%. 
Well, that's I, and high. that's pretty high, right? Yeah, right, but but like that still means it's better than ninety percent. You're not gonna even have the opportunity. And yeah. I just don't. I can't see the value given the state they're in, given the age of Steph Curry, given the remoteness of the possibility of Giannis even becoming available. I can't see a situation where the Warriors choose to keep their powder dry during this season to retain the remote possibility of a Giannis trade in the off season or, or sometime in the, in the following year or two, every day that passes that Giannis thing becomes a little less likely and a little less appealing. I think coming up, we're talking about the latest player who has reportedly worked out for the golden state warriors seeking that final roster spot, a former first round pick Nasir little. Does that give us any intrigue? We're breaking it down. But first, let me tell you about our sponsor, Game Time. I am a big fan of going to sporting events, as I'm sure you are if you're listening to this show. And one of the nice things about Game Time is just all the different features that they have in this app. It makes it so easy to get the best possible deals because it's the lowest price guarantee or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Also, it helps you be a little more flexible with your plans. Don't buy your tickets two weeks in advance. You get cheaper tickets the closer it gets the first pitch to tip off, to kick off, whatever it may be. You got to love that. Also, you could get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. That's huge. You got to know where you're sitting. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, Kolsky, Nasir Little. I want your thoughts on the former Trailblazer and played last season with the Phoenix Suns. I want to give you some notes on Nasir Little, who he is, is the Warriors are currently working him out in recent days. They worked him out. He's 24 years of age, also worked out with the Celtics, the Kings, and the Miami Heat. He's got good two-way upside, a really good defender, has really good length at six foot five. but a former 25th overall pick out of UNC, was the number three recruit in the country out of high school behind only R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish of Duke and was in front of Zion Williamson. So he's got talent, not a great shooter by any means. He'll hover in the low 30s from three, but can put him up, knock a few down here and there. Is known to be a very good one-on-one defender, still has to mature into a better team defender, but that's where maybe Draymond Green, you know, could affect him defensively. Someone that hasn't been a great team defender before, you bring him in, and Draymond is kind of your quarterback of the defense. All of a sudden, gives this guy a little revitalization. The numbers didn't look great in Portland or Phoenix. I think he topped out at about nine points per game. But again, he's a good defender, adds a little bit of size, and at least gives you a little more intrigue than the Davis Bertans project that did not work out. Certainly more interested in Nas Little than Davis Bertans. Uh, he's much younger, for one thing. And, and yeah, there's some intriguing two-way potential. I mean, I, like anyone they would sign now, well, all right, so two thoughts. Like any non-big they would sign at this point, things would have to go pretty wrong for Nas Little to get big minutes for this team, right? I mean, you assume all the other wings they have are ahead of him, even if they do sign him. That said, if you suffer a few injuries, you could do worse than finding a few minutes for a long wing that can play some defense, right? At, you know, it's not nothing. And this is the sort of player that, as you say, I mean, if we're realistic about Nas Little, if he became a Warrior, it's probably as good for him as it is for the Warriors, right? It's a chance for him to learn in a good organization to, as you said, potentially improve from a defensive principles, team defense standpoint. That could be good for him. Um, and and it's not a bad depth piece for the Warriors. You know, it, at worst, he's a good addition to the practice squad, so to speak. Um I do wonder, though, why 
they don't at least kick tires on some of the like older backup big players. Just in name like boogie, like a boogie. Well, those tires might be a little a little too much for uh, the Warriors at this point. But but Bismack Biombo. I mean, I know this is this is not a name that inspires great excitement or confidence. But he's a free agent. He's on the street right now. He's been an effective defender, shot blocker, rebounder, rim runner, right? And and he's, uh, I think, taller than anyone on the Warriors roster. Certainly a better shot blocker than anyone on the Warriors roster. Uh, JaVale McGee is out there. I know he's older and not. But look, we're talking about the last spot on the roster here, right? They do not have anybody over 6'10". <laughs> like, their centers are Kevon Looney and Trace Jackson Davis. I like both of those guys. They're both in a world of hurt defending a seven-footer. They just are. Yeah, and if Quentin Post is your seven-foot answer, I, I don't think he adds much in terms right. of, you know, and he's, the that, he's a two-way he's player, like stretch, right? Yeah. So, so even if I believe he's on a two way, so even if he he's nothing right now. Oh, he's just summer league right now, right? As of he, right, yeah, as of right him. now, yep, he's not yeah. fine. Like that's not. I, I mean, maybe he ends up stealing a two way, or maybe. Uh, but again, I don't want to sound like I'm saying Bismack Biamba or Boban are are like superstars, but they have NBA experience and they're tall. Uh, I'd love to see Boban. I mean, just for the personality alone, he's hysterical. He may He'd be he, great. He's a great guy to to have not play on your team, which is he's, probably he's, the plan for oh, this yeah. guy. Harry Keep Giles ups on at all times. Make some jokes. Uh, throw him on commercials in the Bay Area. He's great. Exactly, Cody Zeller. Like these are not good. They're not exciting players. They're not. Uh, they're not ceiling raisers. But I think they could be floor raisers for a team that is going to struggle to defend the rim and the paint. I don't know that it's, it just, it surprises me a little bit that you're working out granted nothing against Nas a little, but he's a six, five, like combo forward, <laughs> you know, he's like an undersized combo forward, long arms, good defense. I'm not trying to trash the guy. It just feels like more of what you already have. How, what can Nas Little give you that Moses Moody can't? Whereas Bismack Biombo may not even be as good. At, look, he's got a better NBA track record than Nas Little. I could understand someone saying, I'd rather in a vacuum have Nas Little and, and take a shot than a 30-something Bismack Biombo. Fair enough. But for the Warriors, I, I, I don't want to say they've learned nothing because they're not dumb, but it's clear that their conclusion from the past several years is different than mine. And I continue to wonder why there isn't at least a look at somebody over 6'10". Harry Giles, again, not inspiring. Tall. <laughs> it, maybe that's enough qualification right now in my mind. I'm, I guess, you know, I'll talk myself right out of it, though, because that's never been the Warriors' MO. It, the, height for height's sake has never been what they are interested in doing. So maybe I'm the idiot for continuing to think that it might be worthwhile. They have one guy that was really good at defending around the rim and, and snatching up rebounds and playing a lot bigger than his six, nine frame, at least in 22, 23. And even the season before in 21, 22, his last contract year, that's Kevon Looney. Now we're hearing that Looney may have somewhat of a nuanced role this upcoming season, which involves him shooting three pointers. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you somewhat intrigued by it? That's coming up next on Locked On. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and we have a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers bet $5, and you get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. The last play I threw everyone was the uh, San Francisco 49ers to be the number one seed in the NFC. It was at plus 460. Since then, the 
McCaffrey and Debo and a loss to the Vikings. And now all of a sudden I'm not like in my tickets. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to stick it. No, we're going to stick with it. And just remember, visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. All right, Kevon Looney. They never beat the Vikings, man. Don't worry. They never beat the Vikings. That is, you're not wrong about that. Some teams <laughs> just have their number. And the yeah, Minnesota it's just Vikings that squad. Apparently are one of them. Kevon mm-hmm. Looney, though. It's another contract season. One of his best years was in 2022, and that's the last time he had a contract year. He's changing things up this year. Based on everything we've seen, he looks to be in really good shape, which is huge because he was not as quick last year as we'd seen in recent years. In a Scoop Jackson interview, Looney said his focus was for his body to match his game. Looks like a shooter, and hopefully it matches how he looks, like he could put him up. Um, so here's where we stand based on what we know this off season. There's a million question marks, two things that aren't question marks. Brandon Pachemski wants to shoot 10 threes a game and Kevon Looney wants to chuck them up formula for success. Or is that a little scary? But at one point Looney was actually a really good shooter at UCLA. He could put them up and knock them down. Um, in high school in Milwaukee, they called him the next KD before the hip surgeries. It was at one point a part of his game. We've seen bigs like Brooke Lopez incorporate a, a three-point shot into their game later on as their careers went. And if he could keep other teams honest, it would be huge. But I'm still wondering, like, Looney's going to be fighting for minutes this year. If you're planning on playing some small ball with Draymond at the five and Trace Jackson Davis is another five that you have, I don't see a ton of minutes for Loon. The minutes dropped last season. But if we know one thing, whether he plays two minutes or whether he plays 16, he's playing just about every single game as the Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. So there's so much to dig into here. Um, let's start with the absolutely terrifying pitfall of in high school, he used to, because I, I've been freaking out over the loon mixtapes from high school for several years now, you know, because it just, it's hard to square what we've seen of Kevon Looney in the NBA with what he looked like in high school. Cause he did look like a KD type of player. Um, as you say, there were hip surgeries, two hip surgeries, I think between his high school career and his NBA career. Um, that was why he fell in the draft. He was initially expected to be a higher draft pick, but people were afraid of the body. Um, obviously, Given that his body has held up remarkably well over time, I guess I would just say I can still remember Tyson Chandler's high school mixtape, and he also looked like KD, and he never hurt his hips. Um, It's just a lot harder to be KD in the NBA than it is in high school, right? So, you know, I caution people from getting too excited about Kevon Looney's high school highlights. That being said, I actually think Kevon Looney's jumper as a pro has been underrated and underutilized, not his three pointer, but like his 15 footer. I think that has been pretty money. And like, if you look over the last couple of years, he doesn't shoot it a ton, but he shoots that mid range jumper in the forties. And as you say, he just has to keep teams honest. And for the first month or two that he's shooting threes, if this does indeed happen, they're going to be wide open because people are going to make him hit them before they ever step foot out there so as far as the three pointers go would i be shocked if he hit 35 percent of you know if he took 33s in the first 15 games and hit 35 percent of them that might give steph curry and company some extra space because as you say, last year he lost minutes to Trace Jackson Davis. And I think that's because in a lot of ways, you know, obviously Loon brings a level of veteran leadership and expertise and experience that Trace didn't. But in a lot of ways, effectively, Trace was more or less a more athletic Looney. If he can shoot threes at a reasonable enough clip to force teams to step out and to to help warrior spacing i think he could actually be the primary center because with trace 
like, yes, yeah, small ball sounds fun with Draymond and Trace, but that's still two non-shooters on the floor. And so if Looney can become a bit of a shooter enough to space the floor with him a bit, I think he wins those minutes back. Now, the question is, can he do that just by hitting a handful of 15 to 18 footers? Because I, I, we'll see if his range stretches to three. Maybe it will. I believe it's already 15 to 18 feet if he wants it. And maybe just extending Loon out to the elbow a little more, you know, not quite to the three-point line, but out of the paint a bit on offense, maybe that gives you some of the spacing you need without him needing to knock down 35% of three points. I feel like we forget how good Looney was in one, the 21-22 playoffs, and then following it up in 22-23. I think he had like three games of 20-plus rebounds in that King series or whatever. Game seven, I remember doing the report, and in my report, I'm like, Steph Curry, 50 points of the game, and Kevon Looney once again snatched a casual 20 rebounds, and then he was doing it in the uh, the, the year before in the in the Grizzly Celtics. series. Like he hurt the Celtics the year before. I he look like is there a chance that he bounces back and is a a big time contributor to this team, or do you think his best days are behind him? I don't even think it's bouncing back. I, like he just he's so steady. I don't know. I, I, I'd be great. Look, I hope he does make a freeze. I don't know that I believe all of a sudden he's going to be a 40% three point shooter taking three or four of them a game. That just seems like a bridge too far for one off season, but he really did change his body. And it's not like, as, as you say, with the young KD stuff, yes, it's harder to do at the pro level, but it's not like he's starting to shoot threes for the first time in his life, which is what it was for Brooke Lopez, right? I mean, when Brooke Lopez added that to his game, which only took a year or two, really, those were pretty much the first threes he'd ever shot. He was a post machine. That's not the tradition Kevon Looney comes from. He he comes from a place where he probably expected to be a shooter at the NBA level when he was younger. And it's not totally insane to think he could add that. And again, it, it's not going to take much. All he has to do is probably hit 35% to keep people honest. Who do you think has a better chance of not being on this team by season's end? Like Kevon Looney or Gary Payton? Do you have your, do you have the uh, spot track salary in front of you there? I'd say probably whoever's getting paid more. So I think it's Payton by a couple million, but I'm not sure. Um, I think you're right about that. I, I don't, I don't think either of those guys is a high high value target for most of the teams you'd be dealing with. Peyton by right. about 1.3 million more. Yeah. No, I mean, if you be, did, it would be a package a, deal, right? They, they would be thrown into a deal with a Wiggins or with right. A, but uh, I just Kaminga. mean like if we're doing salary filler, I think the type of team you're probably dealing with might be more interested in like, I don't know, a draft pick than Gary Payton. I don't know how that works out financially, but um, the exception to that might be Miami. If there is a Butler deal, I think Miami would certainly have interest in Payton, uh, if not Looney, because obviously Bam is there. Um, but Looney would make a hell of a backup to Bam. And, you know, I the thing is, Looney and Payton are both guys that are primarily – going to be like the people attracted to them are going to be winning teams right you don't yeah. there's not much use for a Kavon Looney or a Gary Payton if you're if you're going to win 30 games yeah I love the Nets uh some of the the, the comments that roll in on the show and like the Warriors should go take a flyer on Ben Simmons we can offer him let's give him Payton Looney and a second round pick and it's like why would the why would the current Nets want Payton and Looney on expiring well deals, first of all you know? I don't think that's enough financial i don't think that makes them i don't the math doesn't work there I, I, no 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 but also just yeah the nets wouldn't want them and and uh, ben simmons career is over let's uh let's let that sleeping dog lie all intrigued by the videos of him running around lifetime fitness knocking still, down threes how that still gets people, <laughs> every summer i will not, every summer, I'll never man. understand every summer like, listen, who's filming I, this hey i am reasonably gullible three summers ago i bought into some of those videos myself but it's been years of this now we gotta yeah. stop
we got to stop. All right, you heard it here first. Matt Kolsky said Ben this Simmons is, the is ben Simmons. cooked. Yeah, an RIP <laughs> to that take that Colin Coward had where he said, LeBron, we're good. This is Ben Simmons' league now. Anyways, Locked on Warriors with Matt Kolsky today. I'm Charlie Walter. We are free and available wherever you get your audio podcasts. We will see you tomorrow.